I love weighted calisthenics. And after watching this video, you will too. So the number one benefit is that this style of training is very efficient and feasible. More specifically, you can easily track progress. If you take a weighted pull up from 90 pounds to 135 pounds, that is objective, real progression. And you know with 100% certainty that gains were made, both in terms of strength and size. You're not really spinning your wheels in a sense. Obviously, you can make amazing gains without using weights, but the way that you're tracking is a bit different. It's based off how many progressions you can go through or the total reps as opposed to sticking within specific parameters of percentages, unless you're doing a very hard variation or um, you're manipulating volume when you do without weights. So maybe lower rest intervals, higher sets, stuff like that. But when you add weights, you can quite easily run a very basic system using the most common set and rep ranges. For example, weighted pull-ups, three sets of eight to 12 reps, inducing linear progression on that. It's basic and it works. The same strategies that you would utilize for weight training can now be applied to calisthenics. And when you incorporate periodization, which is the formal way of organizing your training by many strength and conditioning coaches, you'll find it to be much easier to program just the way it is, especially with percentages. Because if you're basing a system off your one rep max way to pull up, now you got all the percentages lined up, which will equate to the sets and reps that you'll be using. So this is a very feasible and easy way to train. It's not complicated. You don't have to do a bunch of crazy moves. You don't have to spin your wheels hoping that this is going to get you bigger and stronger. You can use all the time-tested proven strategies that work with weights, and now you can apply it to calisthenics. For those who are saying, oh, but it's calisthenics, it's not the same. It is the same. <laughs> it's just that your body's moving through space and it's a different moving pattern, but it's all about specificity of training. You will get better at that which you train. And if you focus on the way to calisthenics using weight training parameters, progression-wise, style-wise, you're going to make all kinds of gains. Simple as that. There's nothing complicated about this. And a lot of guys prefer this way of training. So it's a familiar system for a lot of you, and I think that you should do it just from that alone, just because you know how to do it already. Secondly, weighted calisthenics builds immense strength and size. Just the way it is. If you're repping five plates on the weighted dip, chances are you're going to have a pretty good looking physique. And you'll be pretty strong as well. Not only for that exercise, but everything else. We can argue that it's your base. It, it has immense carryover to a bunch of other activities, including weights. Not a specific, of course, but... I could imagine that if you're repping out some serious numbers on weighted dips, uh, you're gonna have a pretty good bench press. Maybe not advanced, but perhaps late intermediate. But in some people, it will be advanced, especially if you supplement it on the side with your weight. What I'm trying to say is that the success rate with weighted calisthenics is very high. Just think of the ball back squat, for example. The body weight squat is good for a little bit, but what happens after that? Usually people add weight, and your strength potential is high on that exercise, right? Do people understand that this is calisthenics, weighted calisthenics. If I do a weighted pistol squat, for example, that's weighted calisthenics, right? All right, let's extend that logic. If I do a barbell back squat, isn't that also weighted calisthenics? It is, at least by definition it has to be. That's just the way it is. So we can take exercises that are already effective and make them even better. Same thing for weighted push-ups. It's the same movement pattern as a bench press, except your body's moving through space, it's a little bit better on the shoulders. It's a serratus too. Nice lift. People get serious results with weighted calisthenics. The success rate is just too good to be ignored. Just the way it is. And it even has amazing carryover to regular body weight training. Let's say you could do a serious one at max weighted dip or weighted pull up. Guess what? You'll automatically be able to do high repetitions with just your body weight. By default, it has to be that way. Look at Brian Alsu, for example. I think you could do like 73 or 74 dips. I don't think he trains for that specifically. Highly doubt it. But because he does weighted dips, he's already good at it. And I can name you a bunch of calisthenics athletes who don't do super high volume on their pull-ups. They just do weighted pull-ups and stuff like that. And they're already good when they do body weight. They can rep out 30 or more quite easily without even training that specifically. This can be, of course, perfected with using things like concurrent periodization. We have a weekly volume and intensity workout. Because now you can get good at both simultaneously. So you're getting the best of all worlds. But what I'm trying to say is that even if you don't do that, there will still be a certain degree of carryover that is too good to be ignored. 
So just from that alone, you can become a beast at just regular body weight training. And I think you'll have an edge over people who did not do this type of training. What's also worth mentioning is that when you get good at weighted calisthenics, it's easier to learn advanced skills. Because like I said, this does build amazing general strength. Going back to the weighted dips, if you're repping out some serious numbers, do you think it's going to be harder to learn a planche push-up? Obviously not. It'll be easier to acquire it, okay? In other words, this is a hack, a shortcut to quicker gains on just regular bodyweight exercises. It makes it easier to learn. I've seen some guys who started off with bodyweight training super high volume. Then they got into weighted calisthenics. Then they started mixing the two. Then they started getting the skill work and they already skipped several, several steps. The progressions is what I'm talking about. You can go from like, let's say there's 10 progressions for a lift. Instead of starting off at one, maybe you'll be at a seven already. Because instead of manipulating the leverages of that specific skill, you've added weight to basic calisthenics movement, which got you stronger as a whole. And I'll give you a good example for this, one-arm pull-ups. If you can rip out 75% of your body weight approximately, you should have enough foundational strength to do the one-arm pull-up. Give yourself a few weeks of specific training and you'll get it no problem. Or if you can do much more than that, for example, if you're doing your entire body weight on a pull-up, so you weigh 180 and you do a 180 pull-up, a very high chance you'll achieve the one-arm pull-up, just the way it is. So instead of manipulating leverages through doing harder variations, harder progressions, stuff like that, you're sticking to effective, regular exercises, but they're now weighted, okay? And this gives you amazing general strength that makes it easier to learn. There was this one guy, I forget his name, okay, but apparently he got a Maltese on his first attempt without ever having to train for that. And this guy was an incredible weighted calisthenics beast. Now his form was not perfect, but he got it, and he never trained for that. And I can tell you that a lot of guys who do weighted calisthenics, it's the same freaking thing. You see they make faster progress than those who don't. It's almost like, like it, it's quite literally a hack. I really believe that you'll have an edge over those who don't do this. So I don't care if there are some guys who can get away without doing it. I'm not saying that it's mandatory. That's not the point of this video. All I am suggesting is that it's worth implementing your routine because it will have such amazing carryover to all forms of calisthenics that you're automatically going to be stronger as a whole. This is general strength and strong is strong. So this is the shortcut to learning crazy moves very quickly. Furthermore, not only will it have great carryover to advanced moves and skill work and all that, It'll also have a similar effect to weight training. So if you're doing weighted handstand push-ups, weighted dips, weighted push-ups, guess what? You might have a pretty decent overhead press and bench press. For real. This is not an over-exaggeration. It's going to be decent. Like I said before, never optimal, all right? Because you're not training for that specifically. But if you give yourself some weeks to specialize in that exercise, your, your performance is going to blow the hell up. There's a lot of guys who could do their body weight on the overhead press, and they only do handstand push-ups. A lot of guys can bench 315 on their first attempt. And all he did was weighted dips and weighted push-ups. Again, this is not optimal. With the right training, you can probably take your bench to three and a half or more. But for a guy who does not lift whatsoever, to hit numbers like that, which is very good for a natural, speaks volumes on the effectiveness of weighted calisthenics. So if you're trying to get better at weights, it might actually help you in that regard. And I can tell you also that a lot of uh, power lifters, for example, they use weighted dips to supplement their bench training because they notice that for them it has immense carryover. So the way I see it, if you want the best results possible, do it all. Include a full portfolio of exercises. Do high volume bodyweight calisthenics, weighted calisthenics, and weights in the gym. You do all these things combined into one and you will make crazy freaking gains. No doubt about it. That's what I like. Maximize programming. Then you can even do skill work on the side if you want to get better at that. But that will bring me on to another point, right? For those of you who don't give a fuck about skill work, this is the ultimate game changer. And it's also the ultimate plateau buster. Because what happens when you get really good at the basics, right? Maybe you can do very high reps on push-ups, pull-ups, and dips. Well, you move on to harder variation, right? And now your reps cut down significantly, maybe 75%. The best way for you to induce high intensity, low reps, is by changing the variation to make it so difficult that you're forced to use low reps. Example, planche push-up. A lot of guys can do 100 push-ups, but they can't do a single planche push-up. So it's essentially not even a one rep max for them. It's above a one rep max. So the way that a lot of guys train is they just change the leverages so much that you can now make gains through that, okay? And the truth is that this does work, which is why I said before, way to calisthenics is not essential, okay? It's not mandatory. It could certainly be beneficial, and I like to include it, but it's not 100% required. If you change the leverages, 
you're automatically going to be strong. Strong is strong. It's just the way it is. If you're doing planche push-ups for higher reps, you're going you're gonna to be a beast, period. No way around that, okay? And if you do a straight arm planche, that takes a lot of strength to do in itself. If you're good at the rings, um, you're going to be pretty strong as a whole. So what I'm trying to say is that if you don't care about all that stuff, you don't care about skill work, you don't care about changing your leverages to make the exercise harder, you just want to be buff, you just want to be strong, well, there's no more mental and physical gymnastics required. You just do this, the basic movements with slight tweaks, manipulate your volume and intensity, add weights, done deal. So like I said at the beginning of this video, the same strategies you would use for lifting weights can now be applied to calisthenics and it simplifies the entire process. It simplifies strength training and muscle building, okay? On a side note, if you actually do decide to do that in the future, uh, you would have built enough general strength that it's gonna be easier to learn them in the first place. So right off the bat, you are covered, my man. So those are just some points to think about. I hope it gave you a different perspective about weighted calisthenics. Uh, give me your feedback down below. Do you have other things to say about the subject? And let me know if you want me to cover more topics like this because I would love to personally. So with that said, I'll see you in the next segment.